So the ducks are waiting for me to feed them this morning. As you can see, they see the feed and they see that I have it. So they're just waiting for me to put it on the ground here. I try not to feed them too much. It's, I see it as more of a maintenance feed to uh, balance out whatever they're not getting through foraging. But one of the things we have noticed is you uh, need to sprinkle on some brewer's yeast so that they get their dosage of niacin. It's a vitamin that is essential to ducks. Now this particular breed is the Indian runner duck. I've got multiple colors here, but it's all the same breed. It's one of the older breeds out there. They're known for their foraging. They are known for their egg laying, but they are not known for their meat quality. We had a young drake that uh, got killed by an owl last fall, and I caught it just right after it happened, so I, uh, you know, butchered it, and um, the amount of meat that we got off of that duck wasn't even really enough to fill a cereal bowl. So if you're looking for a multi-purpose duck, this is not your duck. Now, they kind of look a little shabby right now because they're going through the mold, a lot of birds are this time of year, but the interesting thing about it is any color that's based off of the wild mallard the males go through an eclipse plumage where they uh, their feathers change to look more like a hen for a brief while before they go back to their male plumage now I've got let's see a dusky I've got a penciled where's he at there he is there's the gray and then there's the blue fawn those are all mallard based pattern so you'll see their pattern change a little bit this time of year normally that penciled for example he doesn't have all that lacing and checking in the breast feathers it's more of a solid color. The interesting thing about it is every species of domestic or excuse me, every breed of domesticated duck, with the exception of the Muscovy, all trace back to the mallard. So you can cross a runner to a Rowan or a Pekin or a Swedish or a hookbill or whatever, they all have a common ancestor, the offspring will be fertile. If you cross any of those breeds to a Muscovy, they will hatch. However, they are called mule ducks because they are infertile. They are close enough related that they will cross, but they are actually from different uh, ancestral families. The Muscovy is a completely different lineage of duck, and therefore they have slightly different incubation times. They're built differently, they act differently, the offspring come out sterile, about like crossing a horse to a donkey. That's why they call them mule ducks. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I've been sick the last couple of days. So while we're sitting here watching the ducks, I thought I'd cover a few things. Um, if I haven't said it already, I uh, started a new job about two weeks ago, and it's a six day a week job. So, I'll try to keep getting my videos out. I'll try to keep responding to the comments as fast as I can, but please be patient. Um, while it's on my mind, I'll cover a few of the comments that I've gotten recently. Had a fella asking me if I spoke good Spanish. Uh, I believe he's from the Bronx, according to his phone number. And he's asking about pintos. Pinto is the uh, Spanish term for a spangled game fowl. 
And what I have to say is I appreciate you asking to call you. However, my Spanish is not good enough to carry a conversation on the phone. Most of the replies I do on my channel, I have to translate what you type on Google and then type in my response and have Google translate it back for me. That's how I respond. So I appreciate the, the asking for the call, but I'm just not going to be able to between my work schedule and my limited Spanish. If you have specific questions about the Pintos, uh, just comment. I'll try to respond back when I can. Keep in mind, however, that my birds are exhibition, show, preservation birds. So anything of a sporting nature, I'm not going to be able to answer you. Secondly, I had a gentleman ask me how far I am from Knoxville, Tennessee, and the answer is I am about a little over 15 hours northwest of Knoxville. Uh, put it to you this way, I'm far enough north that we get semis on the roads up here pretty regular that have Canadian plates, alright? So, that should give you an idea. Now, getting back to these ducks, the reason we got them, number one, I just really like them. I think they're entertaining and they're cool to look at. But uh, we had planned on trying to set up an egg business off of the ducks. Unfortunately, due to our work schedules, we have not been able to advertise and make the connections and stuff that we should. So, we basically had a product without a market. So a lot of these ducks are probably going to get sold here in the near future. I'll retain a few for breeding. As far as the colors go, we've got black. If I look like I'm pointing to something that's not there, it's because I'm looking over my phone and pointing and then trying to find it on my phone. So I got black. The little mallard colored hens are called grays. White. There's a blue fawn drake in there there's a penciled hen pencils are related to the fawn and white pattern which is the signature pattern of this breed and interestingly there's fawn and whites in the u.s and fawn and whites in the uk which are slightly different and in the uk they also have what they call a fawn which to my knowledge we don't have in abundance in the u.s this little mallard colored drake here is a gray drake and then there's a blue hen sitting in there. She's just a uh, Cumberland blue, they call it. She's not a very good example of the color, though. She's a hatchery stock bird. Uh, basically, she's, as far as breeding and show quality, she is the low rung on the ladder in this flock. Everything else is really good quality. Uh, let's see what else do I got running around in here. So you notice there's some hens that are patterned like a mallard behind this black here but she's light really really light color that's called a trout and I guess if you look at the hen you compare it to a trout it, it kind of makes sense and I don't fully have my head wrapped around the genetics of ducks yet but it is basically a modified wild pattern and I've got a, a blue fawn hen over here and that's more or less it for colors. Um, somewhere running around here are the four ducklings we hatched off this year. And I'm coming to a close on my hatching, so there will be a video on that shortly. But I will say this, this year's hatching situation was a disaster. And um, I'm not going to have as many birds available this fall as I thought. So I apologize for those of you who are inquiring. But it's going to be a pretty small number of birds that are going to be for sale this fall. And that right there is why they're called runner ducks. They, uh, because of the way they stand... 
they don't waddle they they will actually run and they can get some speed to them actually as well so i know some of you probably just want to skip this video and go straight to game foul but i do want to remind people from time to time that i do have birds other than the game foul and i need to do a better job of covering those as well so just stick with me try to cover my bases with everybody and thanks for watching.